I'm not quite ABC, and I may not have the rights to ABC like um, Peter Griffin once had in that Family Guy episode, but I like music, and I like hockey. And with that being said, we welcome you to another great edition of the Tom Green Podcast. As you guys are aware, I just had hernia surgery this past Monday, and as for my how I'm feeling, I can sit. I can stand briefly. I can lay down. But when it comes to laying down to sitting up or sitting up to standing up, that's where I run into trouble. Thankfully, I can speak, and thankfully, I can. I have a functioning brain after the anesthesia got to me a little bit. But here we are tonight about to record an NHL season preview because the Capitals are about to raise the Stanley Cup banner. I know a lot of people are excited for the season to start, including our guest tonight, who is half of the Kangaroo Court podcast, all the way from the state of hockey in Minnesota. Notice the the accent there when I said Minnesota. Alex Wynn. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, thanks for having me, Tom. Spoken like a true uh, hockey player there. You're battling through some adversity to, to keep playing, so... Good for you for sticking through it and playing injured tonight. Oh, of course. What a lot of people don't know is that the different one of the differences between hockey and football. Hockey, they take about fifty, at least fifty percent more hits. The hits are fifty percent, at least fifty percent harder, and they do this eighty-two times a year. In football, they only do it a maximum of twenty-two. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, so yeah, a lot longer season for sure, and it's definitely a fast-paced sport, and um, I really enjoy watching it. So, of course, I, and how I got into hockey, of course, before we get started, was um, of course being a Red Wings fan. Of course, I lived through the twenty-five consecutive playoff seasons, but of course, I felt that just watching it on TV hockey was just another sport to me. Well, my senior year of high school, <clears throat> we're talking winter of twenty twelve. I actually got to do a yearbook class for Essexville Garber High School. And uh, we chose to do um, photos for some different sporting events. And I had seen that a hockey game was available. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I do this? So I signed up for the hockey event. Got to um, the Bay County Civic Arena here in Bay City, Michigan. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And that's how I really started to get into really a lot of hockey. I mean, of course, be having a successful Red Wings team for all those years gets you interested, but taking pictures and actually being at the event really sparks a lot more interest out of yours truly. How did you get started in hockey, Alex? Yeah, so, you know, growing up uh, here in Minnesota, my dad used to play hockey um, and just kind of you know, living in Minnesota, you get thrown into it pretty early. Um, it is a state of hockey. Skating. Yeah, I and mean, uh, started skating uh, young and, and played into high school and everything like that. So, um, you know, growing up around here, you kind of you fall in love with the game pretty early. Yeah, and around here, you you, you love football and around the state of Michigan because and you've seen that Fox Sports Detroit has their football week in Michigan on Thanksgiving week, but here it's more of a football and basketball type of state. However, we love our hockey too, and sometimes we like to call our state the state of professional hockey. <laughs> As the Wild have yet to win a Stanley Cup, but the Wings have won 11. I, ha- I had to throw that jab in there, but of course I respect yeah. Minnesota for their youth programs because they are really the state of hockey. They have their own day, for Christ's sakes, the Hockey Day in Minnesota. Yep, yeah, no, and uh, Michigan is a great hockey state, too. You have the, you know, Michigan, Michigan State. You have three yep. other Division One schools with Northern and Western and Michigan Tech, and then you have the United States Development Program there in uh, Plymouth. So, you know, mm-hmm. Michigan's not, Michigan's definitely a state uh, that is well represented in hockey as well. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget Ferris State, too, and Big Rapids. They've, they've come close to a national title before. Oh, yeah, there you go. I forgot about Fair State. 
In fact, in our broadcasting program, I'll talk a little bit about the broadcasting program that I initially signed up for back in school. Uh, it's usually you go from Delta College to Ferris State. Well, I took a little bit of a different route. I went to Saginaw Valley. It's because, one, I'm a broke college kid, and two, I kind of like living with my parents in a way, even though they're listening to the show, they're thinking, oh, God, when can this kid get out of here so we can have our privacy? But I'm thinking the same thing, kind of. But point being, that's part of the broadcasting school as well, Ferris State. Doc, Chris Kunitz was a Ferris State guy. There we go. A lot of talent from the state of Michigan. So with that being said, before we get to our hockey preview, i got two shout-outs to give out since Alex is a Minnesotan. I brought in this, I brought in someone from the state of hockey. First, I got a shout out Audra, as she knows about the program as well. I've actually asked her to be on the program before, but of course she's gotten too busy. Have you ever been around Audra, Alex? No, I haven't. Uh, we see her on uh, Fox Sports North quite a bit up here. She follows the Twins in the wild, so uh, we see her on, on TV, but I've never never had uh, the chance to meet her. Well, she's, she's very sweet, very nice person, I hope. Hope you get the chance to meet her at some point. So, of course, Audra is going to be listening to our show as well as Jamie Hirsch. Shout out to Jamie. And I had seen on your Twitter, <laughs> of course, me being a little bit of the snooper that I am, that she follows you. Yeah, you know. Um, I, I will ask, last, how did that come about? Last hockey season, um, a couple friends and I had more of a Minnesota Wild-centric Ooh. podcast. Um, and she actually came on uh, for one of our episodes and um, you know I think she retweeted our episode and, and gave me a follow I don't really know <laughs> she probably <laughs> muted me she's probably like what is going on with this kid but um, <laughs> no, uh, she's awesome I remember when she was kind of doing the same thing Audra Martin is doing now she's not yes. with the Twins and with the Wild and now she's moved on to NHL Network and MLB Network and everything like that. So, um, yeah, all the success, um, you know, all the credit to her for her success. Oh, definitely. And I, I came close to meeting Jamie a couple times, and it was a product of me not knowing that she was there. I had a couple of Tigers Twins games. Then, no, after the fact that she got to NHL Network, I'm like, oh, great. Now, I, now Jamie's over there, but good for her. Success for her. And I got to meet Otter a couple times as a result of that. So, perhaps this could lead to Jamie coming on this show and perhaps Jamie following me. We'll see what happens. There you go. But <laughs> I had to plug the, the shameless plug, as one of my uh, uh, classmates in school, Dylan White, calls it shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Shout outs to Audra and Jamie. So, let's go. Let's get the hot ice rolling here on this hockey show, if you know what I mean. Quoting the movie Goon. <laughs> let's start. Let's also quote Drake and say, "Starter from the bottom, now we hear the Ottawa Senators." Oof! What the hell is going on there? Yeah, the gift that kind of keeps on giving. You know, they're um, just. Uh kind of a train wreck right now um i do you know part of the problem with ottawa is the management looks so bad right now that it's a tough spot to see where free agents would want to end up um because they have you know matt duchene mark stone brady kachuk logan brown they have some good pieces but you know free agents don't want to go there in the next couple years because of management it's going to be a a tough way to rebuild also, you know, they have their first round draft pick coming up this summer or next summer uh, is going to Colorado. So um, it's a tough spot for them to be in. Uh, it's going to be a long rebuild, I feel like. But um, it's kind of a comedy show right now. And as a fan, yeah. it's kind of funny to, um, you know, at least it's not the team I'm cheering for. It's fun to laugh at. So. <laughs> of course, and to think that Mark Stone was a huge part <clears throat> of the Senators' success. Just a couple of year, just a couple of years ago, coming within a couple of games of the Stanley Cup Finals, and now they're just nowhere. Yeah, absolutely, and he's 
you know, he he's one of those players who he can put the puck in the net. He's kind of a point per game type of player. He'll be um, in the, you know, he's definitely one of their best players. And him and Matt Duchesne will be on one year contracts this year. And you know, by the sounds of it, they both want out of there. And it's not a good look for Ottawa right now, but. Um, you know, like I said, as a yeah. fan of a different team, it's kind of, it's okay in the sense that it's not the team you're cheering for. In a way, it's almost like, um, and dare I say this, it's almost like Torrey Hunter and uh, Victor Martinez and the Detroit Tigers. I mean, they, they had one-year, con- well, not quite one-year contracts, but they were the veteran leadership that's helping now a rebuilding team. Yeah, exactly. Yep, um, and, and all you can do really is go out there and, and do the best you can because, you, you know, you want a different team to try to pick you up in the summer during free agency or whatever it is, and, and maybe Ottawa will be able to trade those two guys and get some some good draft picks or get, get some prospects for them or something that will help them rebuild their team over the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we can't get out of Ottawa without mentioning the Eric Carlson fiasco that was this off season. One one day he's headed to Florida. The next day he stayed in Ottawa. The next day, and now it's official, he's in San Jose. Yeah, it was kind of a whirlwind for a bit. You know, there was a trade talk. He was headed to the Lightning, and and then um, and then it fell through. And uh, luckily for him, I think he ended up in a good spot in San Jose with Brent Burns and the rest of the forwards that. The core uh, group that they have, I, I don't see them. Um, you know, I, I see them definitely a playoff spot and, and kind of making a deep playoff run this year for sure. Yeah, with the lineup with Burns and Carl and Carlson, that leads to perhaps great things. Now, the only the only drawback about that is, and if it if you consider it one, is that there isn't a guy named Smithers on the Sharks. You have Burns and Smithers, like from The Simpsons. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, maybe. Well, maybe they can find a guy named Smith, and they can just call him Smithers, and, <laughs> and that'll be it. I'm looking for Mr. Smithers, first name Waylon. <laughs> that would probably complete the San Jose Sharks Simpsons type team. <laughs> More on the Sharks coming later. We'll move on to the top now in Vegas. So. I'll, I'll be one that will freely admit that I, in, the, in their first season, I really couldn't stand it, the success of Vegas. And it's because here I am as a fan of an original six team. And this could be a, a wild, a, <laughs> literally wild comparison. But it's like you have 16 of your family members sitting at a, at a card table playing Euchre. Have you heard of the game Euchre, am I correct? Yes. And this, as part, some of those sixteen people, one of them is a grandpa, another one, another three are an uncle, and another is a newborn baby. Well, the newborn baby here is the Vegas Golden Knights. They make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. As a grandpa here, I'm sitting like, come on, why is why, where's my success? These guys are just walking into the Stanley Cup final. You got to be kidding me. But of course, this is nothing against the the coaches or the players or anything like that. It's just, here's a first-year team in the Stanley Cup Final versus my original 16 that's rebuilding. What's going on here, guys? Yeah, you know, it, it's tough being a diehard fan of a different team and, and watching Vegas go on the run they did. I think just being a fan of the league, though, is one of the cooler stories that you could have seen happen uh, and kind of unfold throughout the year. You know, they had people telling them they couldn't do it uh, at the beginning of the year and then a month into the season, two months into the season, and they just kept rolling. Um, but, you know, it's it's crazy that you you say, you know, they're the players that were kind of the rejects of the other teams that they got That's let true. go of. But these guys all came together and um, they had a common goal of trying to prove the other teams that, uh, you know, wrong for letting them be exposed to Vegas. And, and there's a coach, obviously, that had a chip on his shoulder for being fired in Florida. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of all came together at the right time. And they play a great, fast, 
speed game. Um, and, you know, they're one of the more fun teams to watch in the league. And in my opinion, you know, they lost James Neal. They lost um, a couple players, uh, David Perron. But, you know, you add Max Pacioretty, you add uh, Paul Stastny. I, I don't see this team going away anytime soon. Yeah, and if we remember the highlights, um, and, and I'm not talking highlights of NHL, I'm talking highlights for kids, like what, what you were probably reading when you were a kid. There was a there was a comic called Goofus and Gallant. I think we've met the Gallant part of Goofus and Gallant in Vegas. You're our Gallant. <laughs> of course. Well, I also got to mention, since um, Vegas traded Tatar to Montreal, I'll practice a little bit of my French here from the Google Translate. N'est-tu pas un musée? Which means, are you not entertained? (laughs) Yeah, honestly, you know, that trade... um was huge for Vegas, I think. Obviously, you get a great player in Mount Pacioretty who needed a change of scenery, I think. He was dealing a lot with uh, pressure being the captain of the Canadians. As an American player, there must be a ton of pressure in that. Um, secondly, Tatar, you know, Vegas picked up Tatar for, um, from Detroit in the trade. Yeah. And I'm sure you remember in... Um, you know, they, at the end of the playoff run, they were scratching him. I don't know if he just didn't fit their system um, or what, what kind of was going on there, but um, for them to send Qatar to Montreal um, and then a prospect uh, for Pacioretty, I think it kind of worked out for both teams there. Yeah, and Detroit Detroit got a good package out of that. They got two, two draft, they got three draft picks, I believe. Two this year, one the next, and maybe another the next, so... Uh, I'm quite critical of Ken Holland as our general manager. He's been there so many years. Yes, he has four cups, but just similar to like Andy Reid in Philadelphia, you lose you lose your voice after so many years being in the same position. You had to have a change of voice, and perhaps that could be with Eiserman maybe coming next year as he's stepping down from Tampa. And uh, but if that if that happens, that'd be amazing. But. He, we did get a great package out of the Tatar deal. I will credit Holland for that. Yeah, I think you're right for sure. They, you know, they uh, stocked up on draft picks. Um, I like who they, the Wings drafted this year um, with Zadina and uh, Valeno. I think those are two really good picks. Zadina kind of actually fell right in their lap. As yep. he, was, <laughs> he was slotted in as one of the top three picks this year. Um and did the Wings pick at number six? Is that where he fell down to? I believe so, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's an unbelievable player to drop that far down to them. Um, but I, I, I do like the Wings. You know, if you want to get into the Wings, talk a little bit here. I think, I think Hall, like you said, you know, Iserman stepping down, it's kind of given some Wings fans uh, a little excitement that uh, Iserman might be coming home to Detroit. Um, which I think would be huge for them. Um, not to say that uh, Holland hasn't done an unreal job as the GM there, because obviously, like you said, the Stanley Cup speak for themselves. Um, but, you know, I think uh, having Stevie Y come home and uh, and uh, just the, the bright future that you can see there, you have Dylan Larkin, who he reminds me a lot of a player like Jonathan Taves, who's not going to be... Um, not going to put up 100 points a year, but he's a great leader, and he'll, he'll fill yes. the net with pucks and, and, you know, add a lot of assists and everything like that. So I think uh, as, as Wings fans, you guys should be excited for the future for sure. Yeah, we're, we're disappointed that uh, Zetterberg is no longer with us. He retired, but, you know, when you rebuild, you have to, you have to start from the ground up, and now we'll have four assistants this year rather than one major captain but yes we are pretty much getting into Detroit talk promise but still rebuilding um, with that being said four assistants this year with Zadina's picket and with um, 
Zadina dropping that far to us reminds me of my Super League fantasy football draft with um, Julio Jones pretty much falling to my lap. I had the fourth pick, and of course we're in a league of keepers, and Jones is probably the top the top guy on on the board. First pick running back, next pick quarterback, quarterback, third pick running back. Julio's still available. It's my pick. I'm like. The opportunity is presenting itself. I must. And that's what Ken Howland had with Philip Zadina. The opportunity is presenting itself. I must. Exactly. And, and those types of goal scorers, you know, they don't come around all that often. And, and from everything I've read and I've seen from Zadina, it seems like that's the type of guy he is. He's going to be a, a 35, 40 goal scorer when he, when he um, you know, Mm-hmm. And the lineup with Zadina and Larkin, that looks that looks scary in the future, that's for sure. So that being said, Detroit rebuilding, but promises there. I'm looking at perhaps an 80 to 84, 85 point year. That's, of course, a little high, but realistically speaking, in the 80s I'm hoping for. Yeah, I mean, I... I wouldn't say, you know, um, I think they, every team in the NHL is competitive and those guys always want to compete. Um, and it just seems like, you know, they, every team, even in how bad they are, you can expect them to, to string some wins together at some point in the season. I think Detroit is going to struggle again this year. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's okay in the fact that they are in a rebuild, like you say, and, and if they get a good draft pick, and this will be another season where they can get a top five, top six pick like this past season, and next thing you know, you've got um, a, a nice young core of players that you can build around. I know, and as a Red Wings hockey fan, I would have never imagined myself being excited for the draft lottery, but here we are. It's our reality here. But to rebuild, like I like I said, and, like, and as you've agreed, you have, you have to go through growing pains. I'm sure you remember those from middle school. Same here. Those weren't fun, but they have to be done. No, you're exactly right. And, and maybe you end up with a guy like Jack Hughes who's playing in Michigan for the United States Development Program who mm-hmm. was uh, projected to be the number one pick next year. So you never know. If you, if you win that lottery, you got a franchise player right there. And... Uh, May the lottery balls ever bounce our way. So moving to um, your Minnesota Wild. I've watched the Wild, of course, for a few years now. And it seems to me that they are stuck in a rut, if I must say. Go ahead and expand on that. Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right. They, uh... You know, they're in that weird spot where you're good enough to make the playoffs, but you're not really good enough to make a deep playoff run. And it's disappointing as a fan um, when your team is kind of stuck in that spot because you end up with a draft pick that's kind of in the middle. It's not, you know, you're not getting a uh, lottery-type pick like we've talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's just a disappointment of a first-round exit every year. but the, maybe the worst part is, is you know, they get your hopes up every year, right? You know, like a lot of Minnesota sports do, the Vikings do that, and and the Twins have done that in years past, and um, so. But I, you know, the, the Wild are going to be the Wild. I think they'll be good enough this year to sneak into a wild card spot. Maybe. Ha ha! Um, I see, you know, I see what you did there. The yeah, Wild sneaking the wild card spot. Are saying they're they're not gonna make the playoffs and I think that's you know that's fair uh, because a lot of people are blinded by the fact that the playoffs just happened and I think that kind of plays uh, there's a lot of weight to that but they prove time and again every year that they're a good enough regular season team to make the playoffs I just don't I just don't see this team um, going any deeper than the first round if they get lucky in a good matchup maybe they get to the second round but I think that's kind of um, as far as they would get if, you know, if they get lucky. So, right. Um, it, it's, it's kind of disappointing, but it, it's, you know, it's hockey and, and, and we love it here. So, um, but the, fa- 
fans are getting restless and, yeah. and maybe, you know, this is the year that you get some contributions from guys that have had disappointing seasons recently. Yeah, and I've noticed a lot of restless fansmanship there, and it's because it's the state of hockey. They expect greatness there, just like, just like in their youth programs. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, Bruce Boudreau. How, how good has he made this team so far? Are they, are they still stuck like they were under Yo? You know, uh, Boudreau, I think, is kind of the perfect coach uh, for this team because he allows the young uh, forwards to to play their offensive game that they like to play. Mike Yo is kind of a defensive-minded coach where, um, you know, he liked to win the two-to-one games and, and uh, you know, three-to-two with an em- or three-to-one with an empty net or that type of game was the game Mike Yo liked to win. Uh, Boudreaux kind of lets the guys, he gives them freedom to go out there and play their offensive game. You might win a five-to-four game. You might win a four-to-three game, but, um, you know, Boudreaux is one of those coaches. I think he's second of all time uh, in the NHL history of coaches for win percentage. So there's, you know, and last year was one of the seasons that really kind of um, showing how good of a coach he is. Is all the injuries the Wild went through, he was still able to get 100 points in the standings and um, be a top three in the division um, team. So. I think Boudreaux is a great coach. Uh, I just, unfortunately, I think the the core of the team around him um, that he's coaching just doesn't have what it takes to get to get deep in the playoffs. Right. And uh, yeah, it seems as if Boudreaux is a an improvement from Yo, even though Yo is defensive minded. I'm more of a defensive type guy, <laughs> as you know. I'm a Michigan fan. I like Jim Harbaugh, defensive guy. So. Uh, with, with that being said, um, I also got to ask, Bruce Boudreau and Randy Carlisle, do they look like the same person? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, they, they kind of do, don't they? They're just, uh, you know, I think maybe it's the bald head, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bald, not quite Kevin Malone type bald head, but <laughs> you can get the picture. <laughs> I, I'm also yep. an office fanatic, as you've seen on my personal Twitter. <laughs> Absolutely. So, with that being said, uh, one more talking point before we hit our picks. We'll compare them to Hirsch's. Um, Washington and Pittsburgh, the ongoing rivalry there in the Metropolitan di- or, or Atlantic Division. Correct me if I'm wrong. But... Um, Pittsburgh's got two cups. Washington's got one. Does one of those teams um, get it this year? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Both teams are definitely a team that could win the Stanley Cup. I, I don't. I personally think it would be a different team, um, but you can't really ever write off a team that has Sidney Crosby on it. I, I just don't. You know, <laughs> you can't really bet against that, especially when the second line center is Malkin. Um, yep. You know, they're just too deep. Uh, they have the the firepower to make a deep run in the playoffs every year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, Washington, obviously, they just won, so they, they can win. They bring back all the exact same roster. Um, they With the exception of part. Barry Trotz. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, well, either of those teams could win uh, the Cup this year, and it wouldn't surprise me. But I'm actually going to go uh, somewhere else for that. So, um, but yeah, you know, those are two teams that I love to watch whenever they're on, just because of the star power that they both bring. Yeah, and it gives me a qualm about the uh, playoff settings as they are, because both teams have to go through each other in the division. When really it seems like Washington and Pittsburgh should be your Eastern Conference Finals. Here in Michigan, we have our um, MHSA basketball tournaments. They're not seeded. It's blind draw. So you have two great teams in Saginaw High and Saginaw Arthur Hill basketball that have to face each other in districts every year. And this is what I think about when I see Washington and Pittsburgh every year is that they got to face each other every year in the playoffs before there was the Eastern Conference Finals. And it kind of disadvantages one of the teams, but it helps, of course, a team from the other division uh, perhaps face them and maybe even beat them, such as Tampa. 
Yeah, exactly. And and for me, last year, you know, I pay attention a lot to to both conferences. But with the Wild being in the West, you know, we we see a lot of Nashville and Winnipeg, and those you know, those were the top two teams regular season wise in the league last year, and they ran into each other in the second round. So, you know, I, I the division the playoff format isn't. Uh, Sometimes it kind of works out that way where the top two teams end up playing each other in the second round. But, um, you know, it creates rivalries or whatever. And I think uh, one way or the other, they're going to have to beat each other. So you might as well, what, it doesn't really make a difference which round it is. Yeah, that's a very good point. Because to be the best, you got to beat the best. Depends on when you, doesn't, well, it kind of doesn't really depend on when you face them. It's if, if you beat them or if you don't. Exactly right. So with that being said, let's move on to our picks for divisions and surprise pick in Stanley Cup. So I I wrote down our friend Jamie Hirsch's picks, and we'll, of course, compare them and make our own picks. So we're going to start with the Central Division. If I can pull it up, there we go. And she's got the Jets. Not the New York J-E-T-S just end this season Jets with Sam Darnold. God forbid if they won the AFC East. We're talking the NHL Western Central Division Winnipeg Jets. Who do you got winning this division? Um, I, I think that's a great pick. I, um, You know, I could kind of lean either way. I think Nashville and Winnipeg will be the top two teams in the Central um, I think I'll have to agree with Jamie and, and choose the Jets. All right, I've got Odd Shark up on my computer. It has Nashville as a plus one fifty odds to win that division. Winnipeg is a plus one sixty. So pretty much within a point or two of each other as these two faced each other in the second round. I like Nashville, but something's telling me that Jamie's right. Jamie's on NHL Network for a reason. <laughs> Uh, give me the Jets in that division. Nashville a close second. Uh, St. Louis and Dallas right behind at plus eight. Well, not right behind at plus eight fifty, along with the Wild in that odds department. So you you guys are going to have a battle for third place between, like I said, Minnesota Wild, the Dallas Stars who took your name, and the St. Louis Blues. Uh, yep, Jets winning the division. Uh, give me the Stars actually as your. Uh, third place team in that division. Well, surprise pick. Do you do you like do you like the stars in the third spot? I think so. Yeah, I mean it, it's going to be it's going to come down to the wire uh, between um, you know I think the Avalanche, the Wild, the Stars, and the Blues will all be competing for that fourth spot, and then a couple of the Wild card spots even. So I think the third. Um, the third spot will go to the Blues. I think the, the Wild and Stars will be right behind them. Yeah, and I also have a, a super fan of this podcast named Alex DeWitt, who is a St. Louis Blues fan. So he'll be questioning me quite a bit for picking Dallas, but sometimes you just got to take a shot in the dark, and sometimes you're successful. <laughs> Absolutely. So moving on to the Pacific Division, we're staying in the Western Conference, as that's your conference it was my conference for over 80 years but i'm only a quarter of that age now that i'm in the east thank god i don't have to stay up until midnight central time half the time um she's got vegas winning hers has got vegas winning the pacific division the sharks are a 240 odds on odd shark vegas at 260 who you got alex you know, I think after um, the Carlson trade, I, I think I'm going to go with San Jose winning the Pacific. I like Vegas. I think they're going to be in the mix. Um, if I had to choose the top three, I think I would say San Jose one, Vegas two. And I'm going to go with Calgary three as kind of one of my surprise teams okay. there. Of course, I like Vegas for a lot more reasons than just their hockey team. One of them being the pawn shop. Of course, I've never been to Vegas, but one of them being the pawn shop, Rick Harrison Pawn Stars. God rest his soul, old man. And, of course, the whenever I hear Vegas, the, um, I actually have a tweet from Hirsch that reminds me of at the Bellagio working on Stanley Cup Finals. This is a dream. I'm like, that certainly is a dream, being at the Bellagio working on Stanley Cup Finals stuff. Holy cow. Um 
With that being said, and yes, I like to go off topic sometimes in a funny way, uh, I like San Jose as well with the Carlson trade. Vegas will be right up there. Uh, they may have hit some beginner's luck, but luck of the draw being sometimes you hit a winning streak after you hit the jackpot. So San Jose 1, Vegas 2. Give me Anaheim. I'll take Anaheim as 3 in that one. Anaheim, L.A., and Calgary at both 550 odds. Edmonton right behind at 650. Uh, give me the Ducks as 3. Calgary as 4. The Kings as 5. Um, Calgary, I think, will compete for a wild card, perhaps. However. Yeah, it, it's another tight division where L.A., Anaheim, Calgary um, can kind of all compete for that third spot and wild card spots. And even Arizona will, I think, be a team that surprises some people this year, too. Nah, Vancouver's winning it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had, to, had to bring in a funny at least once. So moving on to the Eastern yep. Conference, we're going Metropolitan. Our friend Jamie's got the Pens winning the Metropolitan Division, even though the Caps have won the Stanley Cup. Now, an odd shark, it's got the Pens at a 180 odds and the Caps at 240, followed by Columbus and Philly at both 600. So tell me who you got in the Metropolitan. Yeah, the Metro will be a tight, uh, tight division. You know, it seems like it's, every division is going to be that way uh, again this year for the top three spots. Um, I see for the top three, I have, uh, you know, Washington, Pittsburgh, as, uh, and Philly as my top three. I, I don't know which order exactly to choose them in. It's, it's crazy, you know. Philadelphia is a team that I can see if they get some good goaltending, they'll be a team that can maybe win that division. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if they're going to get that goaltending in, unless they can make a trade. Um, I'll go with Pittsburgh winning it, and then uh, Philadelphia in second, and Washington in third. Here's a suggestion to the Philly faithful. Have your mascot be your goalie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like that. Because that's gritty. Real gritty. Absolutely. <laughs> that, thing, that thing is scary. I mean... I don't know if I'd, I'd let my kids be in the arena. And of course, I'm 23 years old and single, so I'm not even. I'm, I'm thinking more about beer than kids. But besides the point, that thing's scary. I don't know if I'd spit my drink in that thing. Oh my! Oh my! That oh, 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 oh. that's that's giving a lot of Philly faithful some nightmares. That's for sure. With the divisions, back to the divisions. <laughs> uh, uh, the Caps won the Cup last year, and they won it for a reason. I'll take the Caps in this division, followed by Pittsburgh a close second. I'm going to take Philly a third, and Columbus will be competing for a wild card spot. Carolina and New Jersey are eh. And then, of course, you got both New York teams who, besides the Islanders getting trots, um, New York, the New York state of mind looks to be – more focused towards the Giants and the Jets rather than the Rangers and the Isles this season. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. I think both Rangers and the Islanders will be in kind of a rebuild mode this year and, and kind of towards the bottom of that division. So, but, but I do like Florida. The, the Panthers is one of my surprise teams, too. Okay. And we're actually going right into that. The last division, the Atlantic. Yep. Our friend Jamie's got Toronto winning the ath or the a Atlantic. I almost said Athletic. Uh, at Atlantic. Uh, Toronto at 160 odds. Tampa Bay at 165. Boston at 260. And the rest are over 1,000. Um, who do you like there? You know, I like Tampa to win the division. It's, it's, as long as they're healthy, I think there isn't uh, a team that can really compete with them. Um, I think if they can stay healthy all year, they'll be competing for that President's Trophy at the end of the season. Um, I like Toronto in second, and uh, um, Boston in the third spot, with Florida right behind them. And as you probably know, I, I like Babcock. Mike Babcock was our Detroit's coach for many years. And I was sad to see him go, but you knew that the writing was on the wall. Just like I had said before with Andy Reid, 
we just need a new voice. And I think he's doing a great job in Toronto so far. And with the addition of Tavares, it's almost like John Lester going to the Cubs. It's like, oh, my God, we might actually have a chance to win this whole damn thing. Give me Toronto in this division. Tampa a close second. I think you might see a fight in a couple of playoff games between Stamkos and Tavares, maybe even Stamkos and Kadri, as Kadri is quite a fighter. Uh, Boston will give me Boston in third. Florida's going to compete, and Buffalo might compete maybe, as Hirsch has the Sabres as a surprise team. We'll pick our two surprise teams if we haven't already yet. And Montreal, Detroit, and Ottawa are just rebuilding. Yep, I think you got it. You nailed it there with the bottom three teams rebuilding. I do like Jamie's pick as Buffalo as a surprise team as well. Yep, and so we'll we'll go into the surprises. So you already had mentioned that Buffalo is your surprise team in the East. I'm going to go with Florida as my surprise team, even though Correct me if I'm wrong. Do they still have Yager? They do not. No, they do don't. Um, we actually, on our show, we talked to uh, Nick Bukestad a couple weeks ago, and he is uh, one of their top forwards. And I think they have a great forward group, uh, a lot of good defensemen, and, and Roberto Luongo, too, um, on the, in, the, in goal. So um, I think that's a great surprise pick. Uh, mm-hmm. They're good enough where I think they, um, you know, they'll be competing for one of the divisional spots as well as a wild card spot, and not too many people have them, so I think that's a great surprise pick. Oh, yeah, and don't forget, Roberto Roberto Luongo used Heritage Classic pads on sale now on eBay. Wow. <laughs> I'm, of course, that's a joke because Torts did not use Luongo in the Heritage Classic years ago. As for the West, surprise pick. Tell me. So, for the Western Conference, I think it, my surprise pick will be Arizona. I think they have a lot of good forwards now, and Clayton Keller will be a player to keep an eye on. Um, and then, you know, if Nancy Ronta, their goaltender, can stay healthy, I think they'll surprise some teams for sure. I think, I think I'm going to go with the Kings as my surprise because even though Sutter is gone and he has been for a couple of years, the Kings seem to always be built for April, May, and June. In fact, I play, I've played Bucci Overtime Challenge before, and the first time I got the Bucci Overtime Challenge right was Alec Martinez's Stanley Cup winning goal in 2015. I didn't, I've never won anything from Bucci. Bucci needs to retweet me, but fun fact, first time I ever, well, not first time I ever played, but first time I got it right was Alec Martinez's come clinching goal. Yeah, there you go. I remember that goal. As I, I, when I was tweeting that night, I'm like, something's telling me Martinez is going to score it because he's done this before. So, Alec Martinez, Martinez scores! Yeah, Bucci retweet me! Bucci retweet me! <laughs> he didn't, but at least I know a little a thing or two about the Bucci Overtime Challenge. So, last question yeah. for you is for hockey. Who's winning the Stanley Cup? Hirsch has got San Jose. Does she have who it's going to be against? She does not. No, um... You know, I think San Jose is a great pick out of the West. I think Winnipeg would be a good pick out of the West, um, or Nashville even too. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take my pick from the East. I'll go with the Lightning, and I think uh, you know if I had to choose a team that they would beat, I would pick. I'll go with Winnipeg. So Lightning over Winnipeg for me. Okay, I think I'm gonna go San Jose over Tampa. And the reason why I'm not picking Toronto, even though I'm high on them, is because Tampa's got the experience. John Cooper has got... Yes, um, Babs has more experience in the Stanley Cup Finals than John Cooper, but the team, as I'm talking about the teams on the ice, John Cooper's team is more experienced than Babs's does. And I think that will play a factor in the Eastern Conference Final. So I'll take Tampa to go to the final in the East, 
As for the West, I like the Sharks. Um, if you like beards, you like the Sharks. If you like um, aquariums and, you know, <laughs> if you like Sharks, pick the Sharks. <laughs> I, I, I like the Sharks to win the Cup in six over Tampa. There you go. That's a good pick. So, with that being said, my last question is for any of the other podcasts I've done, do you have anything else to add to this wonderful Tom Green podcast? <laughs> um, no, thanks for having me, Tom, and I appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to tonight as the start of the NHL season. Uh, just like everyone else, so mm-hmm. um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think I have anything else to add for you. All righty. Well, he is Alex Wynn from the State of Hockey and the Kangaroo Court Podcast, and hopefully, towards the end of October, maybe into November, we'll have his sidekick Mike Carmen on from the podcast, and we'll have a little Kangaroo Court on the Tom Green NHL Pod. Thanks again, Alex, and this has been another great edition of the Tom Green Podcast.